Quick, why should you trust me and not one of the hundreds of other YouTube videos about prepping and getting a 36 on the ACT? Well, let me give you three quick reasons. Number one is I'm 17. I literally took this test earlier this year in 2022. I prepared for it in 2022, so I know how it works. And if you're watching this in 2023 or 2022, you know that this video will actually have good tips for you. Unlike 99% of the people on YouTube who are old and took the test back in 1990, they don't know what's going on right now on the ACT test. Number two is I'm not trying to sell you a course like this guy. I also don't lie about my score in order to convince you to get my course. I actually got a 36 and so I'm not lying to try to get you to buy a course. And third is I give specific advice, actionable adv advice instead of generic advice that a lot of prep companies will like to give out because I believe these specific actionable items that helped me can potentially help you as well. So who am I? I'm Rishabh Jain. I got a 36 on my ACT with minimal studying, and my philosophy is all about working smarter, not working harder. I don't think you should have to do hundreds upon hundreds of practice tests. I don't think you should have to register into courses and get special prep for the ACT. I believe you just need to work smarter, not harder, and hopefully my tips will be able to help you, so stick around until the very end of the video. First, let's get into test taking tips. TTT, all right, timing, that's a fourth T. Timing is literally everything. I know this sounds cliche, but let me explain. It's a little bit different than the way that you're probably thinking it is. Timing on the ACT is really important, especially on the math and reading sections I found. So on the math section specifically, there's 60 and 60, 60 questions, 60 minutes, one minute per question. No, that's completely wrong. Not one minute per question. The ACT is ordered easy to hard for the math section. So you're going to have easy questions like two times two. Okay, not two times two, but there will be easy questions at the beginning. There will be hard questions at the end. And on my one of my first practice tests I took, um, I didn't take too many practice tests, but I think on like the first or second one that I took, I noticed that the first 10 or 20 questions on the ACT, I finished them in maybe like 30 seconds a piece. And so I thought I had so much time remaining. I was like, okay, I can take my time, check my work and everything will be okay. I got to question 50 and I'm like, okay, wait, now I'm like, almost out of time and I have 10 questions left and those are actually hard questions that will take more time. So what you should instead do is do the easy questions fast and do them first at the beginning. Then answer as many of the hard questions as you can. I know that some sites and some videos will recommend you to flip this around, do the hard questions first, but your goal should be to get as many points as possible. So that doesn't make any sense to me. I think instead you should do all the easy questions, medium questions, and then let's say you're running out of time you have 55 out of 60 completed, you ditch the last five questions. That's much better than ditching five easy questions because the easy questions you will actually be able to get right. So do beginning to end, do the easy questions fast. Don't double check them. If you can just be careful and have that in your mind because that is more optimal for getting more points in my opinion. Next is the reading section. This is 40 questions, 35 minutes. Again, very, you know, stringent time, less time to answer per question. But one thing that really helped me get a 36 on reading was uh, specifically going to certain passages. So there's four different types of passages, prose fiction, social studies, humanities, and natural sciences. I found it really helpful to go to the science passages first because I'm kind of like a science guy. Um, so I went to natural sciences first, and then that kind of got my brain warmed up and in this reading mode. And then I went to social studies, then humanities, and then prose fiction. For those of you who love reading like fiction books, um, and maybe in your practice, you find that you're way better at prose fiction than science, then instead warm your brain up on the fiction passage first by completing that and then go to the other so that you're ready for the more dense stuff that's in the science section. So it's gonna be different per person, but really do do this like i i first i think I, I i actually saw this tip before taking my act like this isn't something novel that i came up with uh, i wish it was but no um i saw this tip and i didn't take it into consideration and then on my actual act test i spent five minutes at the beginning on the prose fiction passage and i was like okay my brain is not ready for this let me just skip to the natural sciences section i ace through the natural sciences section and then i'm all warmed up and then i do the rest so it was it worked out really well just by focusing on sections that I knew I was good at. Um, another general test taking tip is to bubble at the end. 
This literally changed all my tests and not just the ACT, AP tests, class tests, everything. I now bubble at the end because this saves so much time. This is a really helpful tip. So basically what you wanna do is you're gonna get a workbook on the ACT um, that will have your problems and it will have the questions as well. So circle the answer on the workbook, um, write up in the workbook, underline whatever you need to do in the workbook. Then in, when you have five minutes remaining at the end of the section, when they give you the five minute timer or you have your watch or whatever, then you go onto your bubble sheet and just transfer the answers bubble in. This is much faster because your brain is good at doing the same thing again and again, like writing the same sentence again and again without a pause in between by going to the next question. So instead of going back and forth, first just answer all the questions, then bubble in. Another thing that's really helpful is also just bubbling everything. This should be pretty self-explanatory. Guess on everything. You don't lose points for guessing. So if you, you know, run out of time, make sure you just bubble every question for every possible point you can get. Next are section specific tips. First up is science, my favorite section. Um, okay, this is kind of a joke. Science is not completely free, but I believe that it, sh it can be free for a lot of science students specifically. So if you are a science student and you've taken AP Bio, AP Chem, AP Physics, something like that, I believe the science ACT section, if with just a little bit of practice, you can get a 36 on this pretty fast. And so science can become really daunting. And I found like a bunch of people like my friends are always like, yeah, the passages are just like so dense and they're right. But the graphs and tables are like, they, they are graphs and tables. So the whole point of them is you look at them and all the questions will be mostly relating to the graphs and tables. There's gonna be some questions that will ask you about a specific method that was mentioned in the passage. But for the most part, if you just attack the graphs and tables, you can get a lot of points. And I believe because of this, the science section is a section where you can practice and you can improve your score a lot. So if you're getting 35s, 36s on the other sections and you're getting like a 30 or 31 on science, you can actually improve science a lot a lot easier than trying to raise a 30 on the reading to a 36, in my opinion. So make sure you attack all the graphs and all the tables on the science section if you're having trouble understanding the passage because it will just ask you about a data point on your graph. It will ask you about a trend on your graph. It will ask you to interpret two different columns or something on a table. So just attack all of it and don't be afraid. Next onto English, be concise. Uh, this is a more of a generic tip for English that I've seen pretty commonly online. Basically, on the English section, ACT is testing you to make sure that you're concise, you're not wordy, and you're not redundant. So when you see options that are more concise, there's a higher chance that those are right. So try to be concise in general and don't be wordy and have 30 words per sentence because there are some traps basically where it's gonna be grammatically correct, but it's gonna be very wordy and will have a little bit of redundant language that you need to catch. Also, read the entire English passage because um, in my test specifically, I noticed like, and this is something that I was talking about with my friends is like, you'll read sentence two and you'll be like, okay, yeah, sentence two is the right answer. And then later you're going down and you're gonna be like, oh shoot, section or sentence six was actually the right answer. So now I have to erase my circle and, and change it to six. So it's not a huge time waste, but it would, be a lot easier if you just read the passage thoroughly and read the entire thing before answering. So try to skim, um, again, for timing purposes and because everybody reads at a different speed, this is um, really important that this is something you practice beforehand to see how much time you actually have if you were to skim the passages first before answering on English, or if you were to skim paragraph by paragraph and answer questions like that, but figure out a strategy that works for you on reading more than just answering sentence by sentence, because I feel like sentence by sentence sets you up for a bit of failure. Next onto math, plug and chug. You have a calculator, use your calculator, plug and chug. That's all I'm gonna say. Also on math, use the math to frack thing. This is super specific for no reason, but I've just found that this helps on like every practice test that I took, plus my actual test is using the math to frack thing on your calculator. Basically, it's like second math and then two frac, uh, like a, a, literal, a little like 
greater than sign or whatever. And what that does is it converts a decimal in your calculator into a fraction. And it will come up in like random ratio questions or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, I just found it so useful. Like as you can see in this image, you have this decimal 0.8861, and then you do two frac and it will convert it into a fraction. And it's just really helpful. Now, finally onto general study tips. These are arguably like the most important because all the stuff I said is like somewhat subjective. This is, I feel like really helpful in general. Okay, one is like, you don't need to take classes or buy courses. I know every single person online is telling you, oh, you can enroll $2,000 for the summer, take our ACT course. And I have friends who took those, but they don't necessarily help. Instead, if you prep smartly on your own, I feel like you guys can all come up with better strategies for prepping. You, you know yourself better than your tutor will. So all the prep you can get is free online. Um, so this here is an ACT book. The books are pretty good. Um, I got an ACT practice book and I personally didn't use it much. I stopped and I instead went to practice tests because I found one thing about the books is that the most of the questions they give you are not real questions. So sometimes the authors will give really, really hard questions. Like in one of the pra the Kaplan like practice book that I got for the ACT, the reading section was so hard there. And then on the actual test, I did perfectly fine. So I got worried about the reading section because the ACT book made it seem like the questions in there were significantly harder than like normal. Um, and oftentimes that's because maybe they want you to spend money. Maybe they, they want you to get worried so that you prep more and use buy more of their stuff. So I'd recommend just like staying away from all of the paid stuff in general, including books and try to stick to free stuff. Well, where can you get free stuff? In the description of this video, I literally just have one link no ads, nothing. It's literally just a link that has 88 full length real ACT tests from the past. Just take as many of these as you can and then grade your tests, see how you can improve, learn about like, oh, I'm performing better on these specific reading passages or on the math section, I'm spending this time, this much time and I need to like work on my timing. Those are the things you can like actionably improve rather than reading a book and then getting worried that like you're completely doomed for this section. Okay, now onto sleep. You clicked on this video because you're hopefully a student who's like, uh, like who cares about your testing score. And so just please don't study too much the night before the test um, because I feel like it really doesn't help that much. It's all about the mindset when you wake up the following morning and you're like tired and then you're like, oh, I'm not going to do well. You want to have the perfect mindset on the day of the test that like, okay, I'm chilling. I'm going to do well on the test and I'm going to get a 36 or I'm going to get a 35 or whatever score you're aiming for. So I know this in my case, like a bunch of my friends were studying the night before the ACT test, before our school administered the ACT test. And so I studied a little bit and then I was just like, okay, you know what? I'm not doing this. And that is perfectly fine because you don't need to study the night before the test. Please get rest. Um, and then also comment all your test taking tips in the comment section. I'm going to go through them and I'm sure I hope all of you who are watching also goes go through those because I don't I've only taken so many tests in my life, but if we have 100,000 people who are watching this video who comment their test taking tips, we can potentially get really good, uh, like a really good curation of tips. And also like this video if you liked it right now, and then subscribe for more ACT test stuff. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next ACT test prep video, if that ever happens.